Hi everyone, I thought today we might go through some updates on the residents of my nature room as there has been some developments I haven't really had an opportune moment to talk through. So I've just got some clips of the guys and I can talk you through how they're all doing, any updates on the individuals and plans going forwards. What I'll do is I'll just refer to them as their common name for now and I'll pop the scientific name in a text on the video just in case you want to look them up and know a little bit more about them. So first on the list is my orchid mantis. The enclosure is looking really sorry for itself now after the numerous failed attempts at growing an orchid in here. I'm really not a plant guy. I don't even know if it's the right condition for orchids in these so I think I'll mark that one down as a tried and failed experiment. He's a mature adult male as you can tell by his large distended testicles or by his smaller appearance and body shape. He's getting on now, he's about two or three months into maturity so I'm surprised he's still hanging on in there but he's still going strong. Next is my more recently matured Nigerian flower mantis. Probably in human years I reckon this guy's about 60. So he's got a while to go unless he's got mantis angina or mantis high cholesterol but that diet of flies should have him nice and healthy. He loves getting his groove on during the daylight, trying to impress the non-existent ladies in the area. The Zen Gardener maid is going a bit yellow though and rank, but still does the job. Then an African Mantis, the prize hunter of my collection. Always a pleasure to watch it stalk and take down its dinner. He never disappoints on that front. I'm expecting him to mature within the next few weeks as he's showing these very pronounced wing buds now. And the next guy, which is the first of many ghost mantids I'll update on. So he might appear as if he's wearing a delightful flowing ball gown, but on closer inspection we can see that unfortunately he's just had a really bad final molt. Not sure exactly what happened here to young Milton Jr. Maybe he dropped or couldn't inflate his wings correctly, but I don't believe it will hinder him too much. We can still provide him with a comfortable few final months. Be a crime not to when he's looking this fabulous and then almost like he was trying to make a statement we've got this guy who matured the exact same night and came out absolutely pristine uh, he's the one that I moved out of my communal first as he was just growing so fast and clearly he still is I got him a good three months after Milton Jr so I guess he's just been saying his prayers and eating his vitamins to get so big so quick these two, are, they were also kept in the same conditions, so I'm content there's no issues with humidity or anything like that, uh, seeing as this chap molted totally fine. Chill Donop Terra Lestoni looking good in his new home. I think he just can't believe the space that he's got now, he's living the life. I believe he may also be approaching his final molt as the wing buds are looking rather bulbous. There's going to be a lot of mature mantids in here soon, it'll be like some weird mantis veterans club. Wide-armed mantis doing good, cool to see his colour color transformation between his molts because he started off kind of a jade green colour and now he's gone to an orangey brown with his stripy little stockings on. Another exile of the ghost mantis communal in here, the reasons for which I will explain shortly. And I do need to put a barrier between these two enclosures just to stop her staring down her neighbours. And on to my main man. You shouldn't have favourites, but this guy's just so cool. I'm really enjoying this dead leaf species. I'd highly recommend him if you haven't tried it. He's so handleable and friendly and just looks so awesome. He's settled into his new enclosure really well. And also pumping up those buds. So it might not be long until he gets his wings out for us too. Grumpy little thistle mantis here is still growing well. He's always just got such an attitude. If I try and handle him, I'll go near him. I'll try off to try and uh, film him doing his diamatic display sometime. And next to him, the star of the show, the Devil's Flower Mantis. Pleased to report that since his latest molt, this, his little bent leg seems to have sorted itself out and he's happily roaming around his added forestry. Another two to three weeks maybe and this dude should reach maturity. He's got his buds out too, the dirty dog. So I'm just praying he makes it through the next molt, which is going to probably be the most difficult one for him. Moving on to a contentious topic, my ghost mantis communal. So, I had three girls and one boy remaining in here and I noticed the male recently molted. I took a few snaps of him and just kind of left him to chill, harden up. 
Came back an hour later, and this little fiend was happily just munching on the last of his abdomen. Uh, I do have a clip of the poor little male getting munched, so avert your eyes in a second if you prefer not to see it. It's not too bad. You should already finish off most of him, but here it comes if you well, do want to see it. I honestly don't know what caused it, whether it's him being freshly malted playing a part, the fact he was a male possibly, but he was the same size and she still made a McMantis sandwich out of him. I was supplying them with loads of flies to prevent cannibalism, but I guess sometimes they just cannot help themselves. Needless to say, I moved a smaller girl out and now there's just two remaining in here. I'll likely move her back once she's a bit bigger. I was tempted to try and reproduce some at maturity, but I don't think I want 200 hungry ghosties running around us. I don't know if I can find a new homes in the current climate. And you can look back now, by the way. Wimps. On to my oldest mantis currently, so Mildred, my giant Asian mantis who's around 8 months old. She's looking more and more plump every day, so expecting her to pop a new Zika sometime soon. And then as a comparison, we've got my second giant Asian who's a few months younger. And you can see the difference here in abdomen size. This girl only reached maturity a few weeks back. On to my non-manted creatures. We've got Brunhilda, my curly hair tarantula. And she's making the most of a new enclosure by burrowing into the corner and hiding for the past few weeks. She was looking very fat, so I think she's either down there digesting or she might be in a pre-molt. Uh, I've opted for a glass water dish now. Uh, I do like the shallow ones, but the water just seems to kind of wick out of it too readily into the substrate. So I thought I'd give this a try, see how it goes. My juvenile Brazilian black tarantula has gone into full lockdown, blocked off the entire front of their enclosure. But they seem happy enough with their renovations shut away in their burrow and still present a good feeding response, so no concerns. Mexican red knee spiderling recently molted and is looking less like a spiderling and more tarantula y. I'm really pleased this little beast comes out so much, he's barely ever in its burrow. He prefers strolling around proudly, so looking forward to watching him grow over time. My sun beetle grubs are still marinating in the substrate. One beetle did emerge, I moved him into this upcoming tank along with his um, empty cocoon, but Sadly, he only lasts a few days, so I'm not sure of the cause, but we'll see how any others get on as still waiting on three or four more to show their little faces. The dairy cow isopod colony is alive and well. Although I've definitely gone a bit overkill with the watering as they all congregate in this dry patch, so, so it's indicating I can ease off on the watering going forward and hopefully they'll thrive a bit more. And finally, my elusive Asian forest scorpion, Mr. Snips, seems pretty content, popping out at night in time just for a kiss and a cuddle. As you can see, the green part of their enclosure that I had on the left has swiftly died off, which I do believe is partly due to the isopods munching their way through it, something I've caught them doing quite regularly. I've put more calcium and rotting wood in there just to satiate them a bit and have plans for adding some more plants in here in the future. Mr. Snips usually just hides away under this bark most of the time, uh, so I couldn't get a shot of him unfortunately. Also any scorpion gurus out there, I think it's a male, but I'd really value your opinion on it. Uh, see the picture on the screen now. As if I'm wrong, we might have to rename from Mr. Snips to Mrs. Nips. And that's all the updates I've got for you today guys, I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to sit and watch this video. Hoping to get some new arrivals soon, it's a bit difficult at the moment with all the lockdowns going on but with luck we'll have some new enclosures to build and some new creatures to pop in them. Take care guys, stay safe, see you soon.